Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Know How is brought to you by Pro XPN. Pro XPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be anonymous and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code KH20. On this episode of Know How Titanfall Tweaks, we're going to go to my bloat goat simulator. And uh, did you ever want to run in low def? It's time for Know How. Welcome to Know How. It's the Twitch show where we build, break, bend, and upgrade. Yeah. yeah. Our motto is breaking things so you don't have to. Exactly. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. I'm Brian Burnett. And for the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to break down a couple of interesting products, some of the things that we've been doing in the geek world, so that you can imitate us at home. It's part of the reasons why we love you so much. Because <laughs> who wouldn't want to imitate us, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> cool. Yeah? yeah. I'd, be, I'd be me. Totally. I think you could get cooler, though. Oh, yes, thank you. Is this you. too soon? Yes. No, 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 no. It's, no, never, no, no. it's never too soon for a good fedora, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Fedoras are cool. Now, you know what else is cool? Don't wear those at home. No, don't please. The, the, this is, <laughs> again, I wear fedoras, so you don't have to. You know what else is cool? What's that? Cheating. Cheating? No, cheating's when totally cheating not cool. No, che cool. cheating's not cool. Specifically cheating in games. You've probably run into this. I know you're, you're, you actually game more than I do, right? Uh, probably more frequently than I would like to admit. Yeah. yeah, and the problem with cheating, especially in a multiplayer, multi-massive online type experience is that it only takes one or two cheaters to really make it not fun. Make it miserable, yeah. yeah. Have you ever been in a, a, a game room, in a, in a, in a, in a match, yeah. where there's one person who's like using an aimbot? Yeah. And like his, right. his kill count is just through the roof and he's shooting through walls yep. and he's tossing grenades over build. Basically god mode. Basically I mean, god mode, right? And everyone just quits. Yeah, my earliest experience was that was uh, Counter-Strike and that was not fun. Because yeah. that game's hard enough as it is. Right. But uh, aimbots make it even more miserable. Right, and I think aimbots are a particular bane of, uh, of any multiplayer game because they are so pervasive, because it's really easy to get an aimbot. And you know you don't have to have any sort of hacking experience. You, you get this, you install it, you run it, and next thing you know, you've got a kill count through the roof. Right, so I guess like as a game developer, that's probably one of the banes of their multiplayer existence. But uh, I guess, was it um, Titanfall has a pretty clever way of dealing yeah. with cheaters? Yeah, so I, I actually, I, see, I really like the way they did it. It's not just how they did it, it's, it's the way that they rolled it out. So right. there have been te cheaters in Titanfall since the beginning. Since it's based on the Source Engine, some of the old aimbots worked just right out of the box, right? right. Didn't have to customize it. And what they did was they didn't ban cheaters outright. If they had banned cheaters outright, people would have gotten wise and they, they probably would have toned it down a little bit. You can actually turn down the settings on your aimbot so it's not so obvious, but they didn't. And so uh. people felt brazen and they went out and they turned up the aimbot all the way to, to high sensitivity, to, to high reaction time. They waited for two weeks, and then they just banned them in months. And then the ban hammer came Bam. down. But it wasn't just a standard ban hammer. Check this out. What they did was <laughs> they wanted people to continue playing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you want people who buy the game to play your game. Sure. So instead of saying you can no longer play Titanfall, they put them all in what they called <laughs> the cheater's lobby. <laughs> I love this. Uh, oh, Alex, if you go to that, uh, that picture that you showed up earlier, uh, you, you see what the cheater's lobby looks like. If you were caught cheating, so if, if they, they detected... If Fair Fight detected uh, aimbot or anything else, yeah. they put you into a screen like this. So this this is the typical right the, yeah. the lobby screen you would get. But it said, <laughs> wait, no, we've detected that you cheated, so we're going to put you in the cheaters lobby. Now you can still play, right? But you can only play against other <laughs> cheaters. Now that is awesome. Now what they did, what they wrote in their message was, well, we hope you like that aimbot that you paid yeah, for. It I better be it was really worth good. The money. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> now uh, I, I'm hoping. We see this more from other games. I know they did it in GTA V. It was the same sort of thing where right. you could play with other cheaters. Um, and, and they also have the ability to, uh, you can still invite people into your party, but if yeah. you invite your friends who don't cheat, they can only play with cheaters. 
So it's it's sort of like a social engineering play. It's like, yeah, yeah you can be friends with that guy, but he's a cheater, and so therefore mm. you're going to be at a disadvantage. He's going to be put in the penalty box with the other cheaters. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was another game that did a pretty clever thing. It was uh, Dark Souls. Have you heard of that game? Uh, no. There were people who got it early, oh, that's right. yeah, that's and right, they that's released right. like um, this unstoppable monster that would just kill you instantly. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was a pretty clever way God to mode doesn't help thwart, that way. Yeah, thwart yeah. some cheaters there. And I think that's that's really the, all that you can do because if you if you drop the ban hammer the first time, people find ways around it. There's always a way around a ba around a ban hammer, right? Yeah. But if you if you just mess up their gameplay, they're they're just they're gonna stop doing it. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the way they they dealt with that. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Although I would like to see some gameplay of one of those matches. Like a cheater versus cheater. Like, how, how is that going to work out? I, actually, that, that, I'd be really interested. In, I'd love to see a room full of cheaters and to see what happens to them. What, what, you know, what do they use in their gameplay? Yeah. Now, speaking of gameplay, we were going to spend a little bit of time helping people tweak their Titanfall boxes, right? That's right. So, yeah, we did a whole episode about you know having a, a gaming PC and getting Titanfall to run nicely on it and stuff. But there, now that it's been out for a few weeks, there's a couple little tweaks you can do to get away, get away with some of the little annoying things on it and stuff. Right, right. And so I don't know if you're familiar, but a lot of games allow you to change some of the commands um, in the properties before right. you launch the game. And it's just basically little things that uh, it tells the game to do before it loads. So one way of doing that, and with Titanfall uh, and a lot of other games, they don't let you skip those really irritating intro videos. Right. Like, oh, this game's made by EA. Great, I want to see that a hundred times while I'm going to play it. It's like when you, you buy a DVD and they make you sit through the trailers uh, and you're just I going, wait those. a minute, what are you doing, please? Well, so anyway, to get by that, and it works for other games too, but we're going to just be focusing on Titanfall. Uh, if you go to your origin, you open it up, and you see your game icon here, like so. You right-click on it, and then you go to Game Properties. Now, I already have these entered in, but I'll explain to you what they mean. This so, th first oh, so this is all command line. Th this yeah. is not a menu. You actually have to know what this is. No, no. It's super simple. Um, you would just do dash, no vid, and that gets rid of the intro video. So you can just skip the videos and get straight to the gaming. And then the next one is uh, dash high, and what that does is it sets your CPO, CPO, CPU priority to high. Um, this one, try it out. Uh, there was a couple people on the forums that I read where that actually gave them choppiness, but for me it didn't. It made a little right. bit of a difference. So yeah, when, when you do this, what you're doing is you're setting the the CPU thread priority. Right. Uh, so right. you can actually go into your operating system and you can tell it which programs should get what kind of priority. Mm -hmm. Problem is, if you're running a lot of stuff in the background, or if you're running something else that requires high priority, right. you, You've now got two, three, four, a dozen different programs that all claim they should be the highest priority program. Right. And yeah, you you've got issues. Exactly. What I've seen most of the time is. When you're playing around with uh, with CPU thread priority, and if it ends up choppy, mm -hmm. it's not the game that's at fault. It's something else that you probably Running set in the background. In the back. Yeah. 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 So give it a shot. Um, but it worked fine with this PC. Like, this is a pretty high-end PC, so there weren't a lot of tweaks that I had right. to really do for this. But for some of you out here, out there who might have a little bit lesser machine, might need that. Um, another one, uh, last one is plus CL underscore show FPS one. And so what that'll do is put a little bug at the top right hand corner of your screen and that'll tell you where your FPS is. And especially, especially with a game like Titanfall, you want to be able to see, you want to make sure you're getting 60 frames per second or right. see where things are kind of dipping. Um, well, th that's the feature that I see a lot of people turning on because even if you're, you're not worried you about- You like to know. You kind of <laughs> like to know, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's sort of a bragging thing. If, if you watch it and that's it just say 60 the whole time, it's solid, solid 60, 60 and you're top, like, yeah. yep. Yep, right. It's my rig. It's my rig. And, <clears throat> and the last thing for Titanfall is the developers are aware of this, but kind of a weird thing. If you go into the game and you set VSync, uh, that can actually make things worse. So what you do is you don't enable VSync. You go into your video card settings. So on this computer, I have there's an NVIDIA uh, graphics card. Control and, panel, right? Yeah, control panel. And it's the same with all video cards. You can get into the control panel by right-clicking here. Uh, and then manage 3D settings and not Goat Simulator. <laughs> but you see here, you have all the options for specifically. I see something has dethroned Titanfall on your playlist. <laughs> well, I really wanted to push the uh, the limits of this PC, so I, I had all, to get a, an even higher end game. 
but we'll talk about that later. Um, but so you see I have Titanfall selected specifically here, and what you can, you're doing is going to the global settings for that, that game. And what I've done is I've turned from, instead of using the global setting... Which is off for which is off, Frank, right? I've set it to on, and uh, vertical sync I've also set to on, and what that'll do is... Uh, That'll do it through the card and not through the game, and it worked so much better. Because right. we had everything turned up on the PC, but there were a couple times where it was like, why is it stuttering? Is that just like me being weird or something? But then I went through it, and I was like, no, if you said vertical sync through the card, it worked way better. Yeah. So. Now, Burke was off camera here. He was also saying, because he, he plays Titanfall yeah. a lot, actually. Right. When, when I do Padres Corner on Friday, I'm normally rendering until you know 11, and rendering and then uploading. Yeah. And he always comes in, and every time he just walks in and goes, Titanfall, and then just goes downstairs. <laughs> but he's saying if you turn off the power management, mm -hmm. you also get a nice little boost. It smooths out some of the video, especially if your card tries to, to like, oh, well, he's not using this process, yeah. so let me turn that down. Yeah. Now, something else that I think maybe we can explain to our audience is mm -hmm. this V-Sync, vertical sync, because yeah. we hear it a lot, especially in the gaming circles, especially in the high-end video card market. Everyone's saying, oh, turn on V-Sync or turn off V-Sync. What is V-Sync? Well, V-Sync, I know, I know what happens when you don't have it on. You get, like, the frame sharing. The tearing, yeah. And so when you're, you're playing a game and you look quickly left or right or up or down or something, you see on the sides of the frame getting torn. And if you have V-Sync on, doesn't that, it just, how does it do it now? It, uh, right, so you're locking, you're locking the frames together. And right. You're essentially saying, okay, I, I don't want you to, and to it interlace so the much video. Smoother. It looks smoother. It looks better to the eye. Right. Now, what people will do sometimes is they'll turn it off if they have a really low powered PC. Yeah, because it t sucks up the power. Because it, yeah. it sucks up power, and, and you know, it really taxes the video card. And if you have a kind of a crap video card, it it, it just it won't work. Yeah. But if you want the smoothest gameplay possible, I would actually take a lower resolution with V-Sync on yeah. than a higher resolution with V-Sync Especially Vsync in an FPS game. Especially, yeah, especially in a game like Titanfall where there is no single player mode. You're yeah. only playing against other people. And a tearing of the screen, uh, I don't want that happening. Right. That's, I mean, I'm, I'm already bad enough at the game as it is. <laughs> I don't need that little extra disadvantage. <laughs> oh, yeah. something you else, every advantage you can get. Something else hopefully you can explain to us. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got a lot of video, recorded video, of your gaming sessions. Right. And you're saying that if you have an NVIDIA card, there's a feature that allows you to to do that without really taxing anything else. Yeah, so one thing with this, what, what card? It's a NVIDIA this is 770, 770 right? yeah. yeah. So NVIDIA provides some pretty slick hardware, or software with this. Um, it's called Shadow Play, and it runs in the background, and when you want to uh, record a game. Wow. That's, wow, okay. Here you go. So this, this all this software the has optimizations, and hmm? The tab Pretty, for Shadow Play? There it is, yes. So yeah, uh, what it does is it runs in the background. And so it needs a six, six, 600 series or higher, mm -hmm. uh, which is not, that's actually not that expensive. I, I've got a 660 in my gaming PC at home. Yeah, uh, yeah it requires a Core i3, uh, 2100, 3 gigahertz or higher, uh, or an AMD Athlon X4, 630 or higher. Mm -hmm. uh, you need four gigabytes of system memory, which if it's a gaming PC, you probably already have that. Yeah. Windows 7 or 8, and then the latest GeForce drivers. Yeah, they, you're definitely going to want a higher end uh, components, because I, I have a fr had a friend who tried running this on his PC, and it, it did cause some slow and stuff but the nice thing about it is it runs in the background and then the key binding I have set for it is alt f10 I think I can bring up the little uh, UI here yeah so if if I'm playing a game and I press F alt f10 it saves the recording that I've just uh, the game that I was just playing that's actually very cool yeah and I, it, it, yeah, I, I know a lot of people have been using fraps in order to, to but unless you have the licensed version it says fraps the uh, licensed version yeah so fraps. if yeah, if you've got a six six hundred or above why not just run this right it's a free and, utility so and uh, you know I've noticed no slowdown on this yeah PC go ahead and play it. some of the gameplay because your videos look really smooth yeah so if the, like if your idea was to record some of your games with your friends maybe upload them to YouTube or something like this is a pretty cool feature and I think I think AMD has something similar I've used uh, MSI overdrive also with some pretty good results. Um, you can record to AVI or MPEG, whichever you prefer. Um, but yeah, this looks pretty good. Um, and this was just, I was playing, I was like, oh, this was a good game. I just hit Alt-F10 Alt and saved like the last 10 minutes of what I did. 
That's not bad, actually. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah, I've been I've been looking for a good way to rec record gaming sessions because, I, I you know, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking if I'm going to be running a capture program on top, I'm going to be sucking away some of that horsepower yeah. I, would pref I would prefer to use for the game. But if it's built into the video card and if it's going to give me a minimum hit on the, not, the amount of performance I'm pouring into my game. I barely I'll, noticed anything I'll when I was running yeah, it. I'll yeah. totally do it. And, and you know what? I bet the, 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 uh, the stuttering that you noticed was more because of the fact that this doesn't have an SSD. This particular gaming machine is running on a hard drive. I think so, yeah. yeah. But, you know, maybe we could uh, upgrade it a little. That almost sounds like a know-how project. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll figure uh, it. Let's put SSDs in everything. <laughs> Just pockets. Yes. Okay. Uh, I love SSDs. Well, we're going to talk about our SSD fetish when we come back, but uh, I'm thinking right now maybe it might be a good time to talk a little bit about security. That, uh, security is always a good priority. Do you, do you care about security? Absolutely. Really? Well, yeah. I, I mean, no, seriously. I do. Okay. Well, how about this? How, how many times have you logged into a public Wi-Fi hotspot, say at Starbucks? Oh, you yeah. know. Pretty regularly, I are you, are or you hotel Wi-Fi. Are you worried about oh hotel Wi-Fi? Yeah, or or like the free Wi-Fi at, at an airport, or a Twit, or like a Twit guest yeah. account. How many? How about this? How many times have you logged into a Wi-Fi system that's not yours? Uh, yeah, All probably a dozen times a week. A know, week, yeah. So. Here's the thing. Most of the time, I trust the people who are running the Wi-Fi systems, but I can't I always like to trust, trust people. I like to trust people, but I can't always trust everyone who's using the system at the same time. Right. Even if it's not a completely open system, even if it's not a system that that I, I worry about being owned by someone, I can always think that maybe there's that one person who has less than honorable intentions and is mm. recording my sessions, is looking at my traffic, looking for something in the clear. I, that that worries me. Well, you've showed us how to do that, so exactly. I mean, if you if you've watched this show, you know how easy it is to do that. Right. It's it's easy to capture that traffic if you rely on someone else for security. So that's why we're proud to welcome to the show a vendor who makes sure that you don't have to rely on someone else for security. And of course, that vendor is ProXPN. Now, what is ProXPN? You may be asking yourself. Well, quite simply, ProXPN is a VP. And vendor. That's a virtual private network. The idea is you run a client on your computer and then you have an encrypted tunnel between your client, between your computer and the pro XPN servers elsewhere. Now, it's, it's not just security. I mean, it is good to have your, your data encrypted. It's good to make sure that no one else can peek in on that information as it's moving through the encrypted tunnel, but it's not just that. ProXPN lets you choose different servers around the world hmm. so you could make it seem as if your connection is coming from Los Angeles or London or Australia or wherever they have a ProXPN point of presence. Very cool. Now, ProXPN is a global VPN. That's a virtual private network that works with almost any internet connection. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel through which all your online data passes back and forth. This is what we talked about. An online application can work with ProXPN, including your web browser, email, file sharing, and instant messaging. Netflix. ProXPN keeps everything you do online hidden from prying eyes, disguising your physical location and giving you unfettered access to any website or online service, no matter where you live or travel to. ProXPN is complete online privacy through a 512-bit encryption tunnel. In fact, our very own Steve Gibson took a look and said, yeah, it's, it's the real thing. It's, it's a service you can trust. It works with OpenVPN or PPTP. You get to choose the level of encryption and the method of encryption that you prefer. It protects you against ISP six strike rules. It bypasses internet filtering and block websites. It bypasses geographical restrictions for internet content and online video with worldwide servers in the US, UK, Asia, and more. ProXPN software is for Windows and Mac as well as your mobile devices and offers advanced controls. You can select ports, connect at startup, and even select which program should be shut down if your anonymous connection is ever interrupted. ProXPN also works with those mobile devices I talked about and gives you a complete package. You could buy one account and use it on everything you own. It's really that flexible. ProXPN has world-class customer support, which means that if you ever have a problem, help is never longer than a phone call or email away. So here's what we want you to do. If you're a know-how, if you value your security, if you wonder if maybe someone is dropping in on your conversations, is intercepting your email, why not try ProXPN today? Go to ProXPN.com slash twit for more information and to sign up now. ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.98 a month or $74.95 for an entire year. But we've got a special offer. 
Use the code KH20 to receive 20% off the lifetime of your account. That's less than five bucks a month on the yearly plan. If you're not satisfied, you can cancel within seven days for a full refund. So go to proxbn.com slash twit and sign up with the code KH20. Do it now. Do it today. Get serious about your privacy. And we thank ProXPN for their support of know-how. Especially, I <clears throat> saw someone in the chat room say they're watching the show at uh, Starbucks right now. So you don't want people knowing that you're watching that show. People, people use, you, using you represent know-how out there. You should know better than that. <laughs> don't watch at Starbucks. Seriously. But actually, no. Now, if he said he's watching it at Starbucks with mm -hmm. a packet sniffer on, all is forgiven. Okay, yeah. Good yeah. job. Let people know. But yeah. let him. <laughs> now, when we come back, we're going to show uh, people a little bit of um, some low def, right? I mean, it's yeah. actually a lot more challenging than you thought. Er yeah, everybody knows how to make video look better, right? So why not know make how to make it look worse? worse? But before that, uh, I thought maybe we should give you a little segment on how to get rid of your Adobe bloat. I'm Father Robert Ballas here, the digital Jesuit, Padre SJ, in the Twit TV chat room, and I'm here at Interop, the NOC, the Network Operations Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, Interop is a networking conference, which means it's filled with all the typical tchotchkes you get at conferences. Everything from light-up axes to uh, little balls to this freaking cool fedora. But my real reason for being at the conference is that I make videos. It's how I get content for some of my other Twitch shows. It's my primary reason for coming to these brouhaha's. And one of the things that I experience is Adobe Bloat. Now, what is Adobe Bloat, you may be asking yourself? Well, if you use Adobe Premiere, specifically if you use Adobe Premiere in Windows, you may find that over time, especially if your projects are big, if you use a lot of assets and really large assets, your hard drive seems to disappear. Even if you delete those projects, even if you move them off the drive, even if you move them off the computer, you don't always seem to get back as much space as you had when you started a particular project. Well, that, my friends, is Adobe Bloat. What's happening is that every time you bring an asset into a project, Adobe makes a cache file, a copy of that file that it can recall very quickly. The reason why it does this is it wants to make it more quick, more fast, more other English words that don't actually exist in that grammatical use, ways to load your, pro your project with a minimum amount of delay. Now, that is cool. It actually works quite well, but the problem is that that Adobe Bloat adds up and eventually you run out of space. But let me show you an easy way to get rid of it. The first thing we want to do is enable the viewing of hidden folders. Go to Start, Control Panel, Folder Options, select the View tab, Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives, and you're good. The reason why we need to do this is because the common folders which hold those cache files are in a hidden folder, which means that if you don't enable these options, you won't be able to see it, you won't be able to navigate to it. Now you need to navigate to your Adobe Common Media folder. Go to My Computer, select C, go to the Users folder, go to the folder with your username, select App Data, select Roaming, Select Adobe, select Common, select Media Cache Files. Now you'll also run into Adobe Bloat if you're a Mac user, but uh, just look for the same folder. Look for those cache file folders and you'll be able to clear your bloat just as easily as you can in Windows. What I typically like to do is make a shortcut to that common folder and leave it on my desktop. It's an easy way to get there and a reminder that every once in a while I should clear my cache. Now let me make one little caveat and that is if you intend to load the same files over and over again, don't clear those out of the cache folder because Adobe's just going to have to remake those files. But if you move from project to project and if you really want that space back, you can find that you get 60, 70, 80, 100, 200 gigabytes of space back on your hard drive, and that's a great way to stop Adobe Bloat. I'm Father Robert Ballos here, and uh, now you know. Now, it, I, Adobe Bloat is actually a serious problem. I, I, you were asking me this during the break, is it, you know, do I really have to check my machine? That 36 gigabyte was accumulated on my machine over the course of four days. That's not a long time. It's not a long time. And the, the other problem is that, uh, well, depending on how much you work with Adobe, that's going to determine how fast that those cache files build up, which is an issue. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what I would suggest is that anytime you are using Adobe Premiere, just have that folder on your desktop so that you know that you can jump into that at any time and just empty those out. Because honestly, the worst thing that's going to happen is Adobe has to rebuild the, the cache files and you continue on from there. Right. Well, I was planning on doing a little bit of editing on my, uh, my MacBook Air, which isn't like, you know, a great editing machine or anything. But I took some shots on vacation last right. week and stuff. And I just want to do something simple. But it's a 128 gigabyte hard drive. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I got to make sure I delete whatever I can on that. Yeah. So. I, I think people became much more sensitive to this when SSDs started becoming the norm. Yeah. Because if you had a huge three terabyte hard drive on your computer, and that's what you were using as your, your primary OS drive and your primary edit drive, then you didn't care if it used up an, another 100, 200 gigabytes. You probably didn't even really notice. Right. You just thought it was a regular part of the bloat. But if you've got that SSD, especially like a 128 gigabyte SSD, yeah, yeah you'll quickly wait, say, wait, why do I only have one gig free? Where did that all go? And yeah. it's, it's in Premiere. Good to know. All right. Yeah. Now, how about this? Over the last week, mm -hmm. we had our engineering crew uh, do something special. It was April Fools. This it week. was yeah. April Fools. And uh, Alex, do you have any? Uh, do you have any footage from any of those April Fools pranks? Okay, so this was Leo, I think, before MacBreak started even on yeah. April 1st. Right. And, and then, we oh, that's right. We, we had the Twitch satellite. <laughs> and uh, then the Twitch satellite, see, we were beaming Twit to all over the world. But of course, fixing it. When you yep. use a satellite, you don't have great uh, quality, right? Well, I think we learned from gravity there's a lot of space debris, Crow. I think, uh, flying around in orbit. So that probably interfered with the signal that we were using. What do I do? Um, now, in space. Yeah, and I'm sure our viewers figured out that uh, last week when me and Alex did our, you know, our segment from the 80s where we showed you how to fix your Macintosh, that was all done post. Right. But and, this was done And, and actually, there are people who have asked, well, why didn't we do our low-quality gimmick, our low-quality gag, it, just with a filter? Alex, do you, do you want to talk about trying to do, uh, like, old analog quality in a filter? Sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, I was just getting that thing going. That's a good there. shot. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I also lost my mustache. Uh, so I just right, and we all shed did. it off. Oh, yeah, here we have it right now. So this this is what it looks like. And actually, can you go to the full side, the full frame for this? And we're going to show yeah. you what the setup looked like. See, we had little pieces of aluminum foil that uh, we could tap together, causing little. This this if you if you grew up in the 60s and and 70s, maybe even the 80s, you knew what it was like to have an analog television and have quality like this. Believe That's it or so not, this is not easy to do with digital filters. And the reason why it's not easy to do with digital filters is digital is basically only on or off. You mm -hmm. can get artifacting, but you can't get this analog effect. <laughs> so what Alex had to do was he had to build... Hey, Bert, but give the Burke setup. credit to... Oh, and Burke Burke, and yeah, Alex and Burke had to build this setup. Alex, what are we looking at here? What, what, what did you include in this project? So, um, here, you can mess with me while I'm talking. So, uh, oh, the, the idea was we wanted to make the stream look as awful as possible. So you we, succeeded. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, what we did is we got these two boxes that um, one is HDMI to composite video, and the other is composite to HDMI. So, the idea was we would take our HD um, digital signal and turn it into composite, and well, that will mess we it. Broke Oh, it. look at that. It's, I did that. It's, okay, well, <laughs> I'm helping. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, and then. Uh, and then the composite would make it worse. Unfortunately, when you just ran a composite cable from one another, it actually didn't look too bad. So we wanted to make it really bad, like this. <laughs> I like this button. This is my favorite button right here. Um, right, so, so what we yeah. what we thought we would do. So composite video works by basically the, the all the video signal is in one wire. Uh, all the, the chrominance and the luminance are together, and that is not great in quality because you want to separate them so there's no crosstalk to, for the higher quality of like component video. Um, but so with composite video, with they're in one wire. Uh, so what we decided to do was just kind of just run a very small wire from one end to the other. Uh, and then we kind of got a little creative and trying to figure out what to do. So I, I, we had our intern Eli in and I showed him the project in mind and uh, explained uh, what we wanted to do. And his idea was to um, take from one box to the other and actually draw um, uh, with solder, like draw a trace over to the other one and have it spell out stream betterer. Uh, but then, so, so then he took it to the basement to work with Burke on it. And uh, they they figured out and that we haven't seen Eli since. Right. They, <laughs> Where they, did he go? They figured out that solder doesn't actually stick to wood, so that didn't work. <laughs> but then they 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 came up with this by taking a wire and stapling it 
in the in the in the cursive text. Right. So basically, all and, the and things that you've been everything. told not to do with wire, you exactly. never staple wire. But <laughs> here we stapled wire. Exactly. Okay. And uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that shot. And, uh, a bit. We're missing a steak knife out of the kitchen. So. That's right. So that, that will never be a steak knife. So again. you can see all, all the um, like the, basically the wire was cut up into a bunch of things and then uh, uh, stripped and then like twisted together just to make it really awful you know surprisingly it is really difficult in in the digital age to make video look bad without it just making it look broken and now um composite video has actually two wires oops yeah. um has two wires um one of them is just the actual video and the other is, is ground and what we discovered was without the ground the video still works but it looks awful mm -hmm. um but pretty much messing with the ground is what gives it the good effect so that. when you like rub your finger on the on the knife because also the ground is going through a kitchen knife as you can possibly see uh, let me switch that back over. Yeah, you're essentially yeah, you won't be you're, able to you're see creating it, a ground hump. You're you're creating a, right. a multiple paths to ground, and exactly. it, that's what. Yep. And, and then there you, we and go. And then if you take a strand of the composite video wire and just touch it to the knife or to the ground and have a little bit of cross, that creates all the the fuzz and like static this. and stuff like that. Hello. And we also just for fun, we ran some AC wire over it the other day and actually had a fan <laughs> running to kind of like give it a little bit of noise and motion <laughs> in the in the graininess. Oh, one of the one of the things I I absolutely loved about this is you took a bunch of devices that weren't designed to do this and you 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 turned it into something else. So again, kudos, very well done. Uh, oh now uh, this is how TV looked when Padre was a kid. <clears throat> Continue, sorry. How dare you? <laughs> how dare you? No, but seriously, this this it sounds silly, but this is an actual serious problem that you could have. Some people are trying to introduce that sort of old rainy feel. You tried to do it with the uh, with the uh, you know 80s vintage computer yeah. video, and it still looked too sharp. It still stuff. looked too yeah. sharp. It's <laughs> so hard to make digital. Look at that. Why? Yeah. That, Why they, did we design this I mean, studio so, so well? We could see what you did. You used old fonts. You kind of yeah, you, you washed the font, out the contrast. Out the colors, you went four by three at the, at the start. Put the bars on. But it. you you can't get this. There's no, no good filter to make this that doesn't look completely fake. No. And so if you ever want to do the grainy look, this this is how you're gonna do it, folks. It's pretty. Cool. Cool. You're gonna make a stream better. Yeah. Pat, copyright. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right. Making things worse. So all right. I think that's to. enough of making things worse. Uh, Brian, I understand that uh, you yeah. have been playing something other than Titanfall the last couple of days. Well, you know, Padre, there's only so many in so many hours of enjoyment you can get out of uh, you know destroying mechs and stuff like that. You know, sometimes you need something that is a little bit more bad. Ass. Really gets your goat going? No, that one wasn't good either. Uh, okay, just 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 play it. Just show us. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm so dumb. Can you switch the input for me? No. Oh, okay. I there, we, it's I on the back. There, I can do it from here. <laughs> All right. So this is another game that is pretty fun, and a lot of those, some of those tweaks and stuff that I showed you for Titanfall will carry over. Like you can go into the control panel because uh, this game, da 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 da, is called Goat Simulator, and it really doesn't give you a lot of options uh, for... Oh, can I look this way now? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Hi, everybody. Now, this is essentially just a physics engine. This is the physics, the physics engine. engine. No, wait, wait, what kind of... Do, you, do we know what physics engine is running in the back here? Uh, I believe... Oh, is it? It's some... It'll come up. I It'll saw it on here. the intro. But, but it's, it's sure a sandbox, it right? I mean, they give yeah, you, they give you a destructible environment, and they give you a character, and the character is a... It's a goat. A goat, And right? it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And uh, can you show... Oh, yeah. Okay, first of all, show us some gameplay, because I, okay. I, I bought this game, but I haven't yet played it because I was on the road. Right, so you well. start off as a goat, and what is the plot of this thing? Uh, well, I, don't, I don't even know why there's a... And why do you have a halo? I must be a goat from beyond or something. I don't... I don't. I have no idea, Pod. There is no story. There are a few really weird things in the game. Like I just oh. ran into another goat, and he seems to have instantly collapsed. But really, it's just a silly game <laughs> where it shows off physics, and it's just completely ridiculous. It's it's oh whoa the absolute opposite spec <laughs> of the spectrum compared to Titanfall. A multi-million dollar you know multi game dollar is, is Titanfall, and this is. You can go into slow motion while your goat is in the air like that. And then there's a hang glider. It looks I, like I know there was a lot here. of speculation that this wasn't a real game because it was released on April 1st. Yeah. But uh, I, I, you know, I saw a little bit of the gameplay on YouTube and I, I went out and bought it. It was only like 10 bucks. It was I, like 9.99 yeah, or something like that. It's on Steam. It, you can buy it like on off their website too and stuff. And but I gotta ask. I mean, there, doesn't this just get boring after a while? I mean, you're essentially just blowing stuff up and thrashing a goat. You would think so, but, but I haven't stopped playing it since <laughs> since last night. 
There he goes. Look at him go. Uh, but have you ever played Gary's Mod? I, I have. Okay, yeah. So this is this is Gary's Mod, right? Is it, uh, basically the same stuff you do in Gary's Mod. Now, you know, do you, you get to play set with the, the environment? Oh, my God. That? Oh, that was the robot from Portal. Hold on. Ugh. Oh, no. Not. What is no. that? What is that? Why is he pushing me out? <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. That's a little strange. No, this game is very weird. There's a bunch of weird things, and that wasn't there yesterday. Can, can you go die? Oh, maybe they add stuff. Can you go die? Uh, no, you cannot die. You, no so matter what has goat. happened to me, I just have not Just like a died. real goat. Exactly. Just like, yeah, exactly. They're indestructible. Okay, now, do you have to complete missions? I mean, is this a, is this a plot-driven game? Or? There are uh, achievements. You can do certain things. Okay. Uh, like, you get points for doing stuff, like blowing things up. Um, okay. Now, now we see that the, it's a fun game, and I'm actually going to go play this right after Coding 101. <laughs> but uh, there's got to be a know-how aspect to this. So, what what are the things that people need to do if, if let's say, their goat's not we running We have to make smooth? this legitimate. We have to, to make. Show, yeah. yeah, this can't just be us <laughs> doing the thing we did with Titanfall, which is we played so much Titanfall we made it part of the show. <laughs> We're doing it for the community. Uh, well, as far as this, you know, like I was saying with Titanfall, like uh, some of those tweaks and stuff that you do can be used for other games and goat. Goat Simulator, oddly enough, doesn't come with a lot of uh, settings like uh, you know filtering for the textures or V-Sync and stuff like. Right. It doesn't have options for that. But you can go into your graphics yeah. card oh, stuff. You and just set wanted that. to get hit by a car, didn't you? Well, I want to lick the car. That is another one of the features. Uh, an all-inclusive Goat Simulator is you lick things and you stick to it. Naturally. So. Okay. No, no. Show us. Show us the settings. So tell okay. us how you tweak this to make this work properly. Well, so if I go into the options, <laughs> see, you've got V-Sync, but... Yeah, but can, I, can you make it do this? Right. <laughs> That's the way the game really should look. Hold on, wait. This is Goat Simulator and Analog. Lick. Uh, you know, you're not... You know what? No, save it. I think we're done. I think we're done. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we do on Know How. We turn chaos into lickability. Now, if you want to play Goat Simulator, go ahead and drop into our show notes because I think we have, I'd say, one of the best show notes in the industry, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. You're still trying to get... <sighs> I got it. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, but also, we're I'd like to mention, it. I think tomorrow we're going to play it on the stream and stuff, yeah. so if people want to watch uh, live and hang out with us in the chat room, you can play Goat Simulator with us. Yeah, but, but please, go ahead and drop by and subscribe to Know How. If you watch us each week, why not subscribe to us either on our RSS feeds or in iTunes. Just drop by our show page at twit.tv slash kh. There you're going to find all of our episodes. You're going to find uh, each individual show notes page so you can find out how we did the actual project projects. If you use Adobe and your computer is bloated, I actually gave you step-by-step -step instructions so that you can just follow them and get all that space back off your, your SSD. Right, and we also have a G Plus community. Uh, Very active G Plus community. We're 6,200 people now. And now after today's episode, we showed you how to record your, your video games. We showed you how to like get rid of the bloat through Adobe. So if you're using Adobe to edit that, and if you want to demonstrate some of your GOAT simulator gameplay, you know, post it up on the G+. We'll take a look at it. <laughs> uh, folks, I should also mention that uh, you see Brian and I up here all the time, but there's a third, a very valuable third member of our team. Ooh. You get to see him every once in a while. It's the flow master, Mr. Alex Gumpel. If, if you'll throw a camera on himself, Alex, where do we see you? I'm nowhere. I'm just behind the camera or behind the You space. can follow him at, at anelf 3 on Twitter. Don't I know that. that much. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. You can also find us on Twitter. I'm at Padre SJ. And I'm at Cranky underscore Hippo. Uh, join us next week, because next week we're going to go into some solar power projects, hmm. and we may be getting into a bit more mischief with gaming. Okay. Till then, I'm Father Robert Balliser. I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know, go do it. Go play with those physics. Go, go, bye. Ah.